Church family, hey, it's Tuesday. Just bringing you a check-in video. Um, talk about Tuesday. <laughs> We're not talking about Tuesday. We are just, uh, I guess I'm just trying to check in. Um, Sunday was, I felt like a pretty good beginning to this next series. Um, uh, we're talking about identity in this next series, but I'm trying to do it in a, in a uh, more encompassing, is that the right word? In a, in a more, um, I guess, encompassing way. Uh, a full view of what that means, identity. I could jump right into the Christ identity, right? Like how we are supposed to be um, identifying as uh, one of Christ's followers, you know. Um, it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me, Paul says, right? Paul, Paul writes. I, and so uh, we could definitely, um, I could definitely just hang out there and maybe just make this a short little series or maybe even just a message on identity, right? But I wanted to kind of make it a more uh, encompassing um, series, because I think the way that we identify ourselves as human beings is more encompassing, right? Uh, every role that we play as a human being, we identify by. You know, what you meet somebody and, and you know, some of the first things that you, that you might ask them is, you know, um, where are you from? Or um, what do you do? You know, that's, that's a big one, right? What do you do? What do you do? The, your job, your vocation, your... your, your uh, um, uh, career, you know, those are the things that define us, typically. Uh, but where you're from defines you, right? Like, I'm from Michigan, and I grew up here in Michigan, and I grew up near Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I am a Wolverines fan through and through, and <laughs> I even revert back to that identification when it comes to sports, right? Um, and then other people, you know, identify with different sports teams for whatever for whatever, for whatever reason. Um, so there's so many, you know, if we're if we're a, if we're a parent, we identify by that. You know, whether we're a mother or father, we identify being a sibling, right? Whether we're the whether we're the first, we're the oldest, which was me, or we're the youngest, you know, the baby, or maybe the middle child, right? We identify by those positions within that like sibling hierarchy. And so there's so many things in the human realm that we identify by. It, it just felt like we had to walk through this idea of our truest identity, which is supposed to be in God through Christ. Um, it just required a, a, a longer and more in-depth um, focus, I guess is where I was going with this. And so I hope... Last Sunday, um, I hope that message really kicked us off in the right direction. Um, uh, in the beginning, right? How, we were, how were we created in, in the image and likeness of our creator, our creator? Um, how were we created initially to be? Um, and so, again, I hope that's, that, that helps that we start that way, although it doesn't sometimes, you may be thinking that doesn't really apply to me today. Uh, it does and it doesn't, right? Um, this Sunday will be a continuation, I guess, of the message, but we're going to probably be in Genesis 3. There have been some texts that I have just felt like have been on the, the tip of my tongue or the, the forefront of my mind for a long time. And Genesis 3 is one of those. Um, and so I think this Sunday will be in Genesis 3, I think. I haven't really studied into that yet. This day's been full, but that's the direction I kind of feel like we're going because we talked about how we were created in, in God's image and likeness. But in order for us to get to where we are today, we need to figure out what happened, <laughs> Uh, and so I think it's important that we even process through that step. And if this feels like review for you, good. I don't think 
that there's ever a time in our lives where we, 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 we reach a goal or we, uh, we reach a level in our faith where we don't need to read something, where we don't need to reread something, that we don't need to hear a message again. You know, you may be very uh, uh, aware of Genesis and creation, uh, you may be very aware of the aware of the gospel, right? You may be very aware of the cross. I mean, we celebrate, uh, you know, the Easter and all that surrounds it, you know, every year. So some of the Christmas, you may be very familiar with the Christmas message, right, of the the birth of our Savior. But I don't think that there's ever a point in our lives, especially in our faith lives, if we're if we're walking with the Lord or we we desire to walk with the Lord where we shouldn't be visiting those things over and over and over and over again. Um, it's not really review as much as it's um, kind of not relaying foundation, but shoring up the foundation. We must know who we are in Christ. This identity series, we must know who we are in God. We must know whose we are. We must. And so uh, if you feel like some of the stuff is familiar that we're walking through, good. Look at it with fresh eyes. Uh, approach it with a different perspective. Act like you've never heard it before. Uh, study the words like I'm trying to. Go in more in depth with the stuff that we end up walking through figuring out the original wording or the original, original Greek or Hebrew um, and, and apply it to your life maybe more fully or uh, um, in all avenues of life or, or whatever the case may be. So I'm just, I'm rambling. But that's kind of where we're going with this identity series. Um, so I hope that you're in for this. I'm processing and learning and reapplying myself as we go. Uh, I never want to get to a point in my life where I feel like I've attained everything I need. I think if I ever get to that point, I've, I'm lost, truly lost, if I feel like I've ever arrived. Um, I'm as much a student as I hope you are. Um, I just long to be surrendered to God in every aspect of my life and a lot of times I fail miserably at that and I just work ever the more to surrender even more let go of even more and walk as much as I can <clears throat> in, in the way that I, I believe that the, the Lord is, is asking us to go which is in just full surrender to him right Okay, so um, I want to just uh, talk about this last thing, and then I think we'll be done for today. Um, I started a new book this morning. Um, I ran again this morning, so I'm trying to get back to running, and I like to listen to audio books when I run. It helps me focus not on the pain of what I'm doing that I hate, and helps me to uh, work my mind as well as my body. And so I was going to run this morning, and I did, and um, <clears throat> I needed a new book to listen to. And I like N.T. Wright. Um, he's one of the leading theologians of our day, for sure, for sure. Um, I really didn't get much into him through school, maybe read a book maybe of his, but I've finished the, the, the one that I've referenced before. I've got another sitting at home. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> I've got another sitting at home that I'm going to read. And then I downloaded this one as an audio book. I have the book also because I'm sure I'm going to be referencing this at some point and I need the words. Um, it's called God and the Pandemic, um, which I didn't think N.T. Wright would write something like this because it's really relevant, right? It's fresh. It's a shorter book of his. He, he oftentimes refers to it as this little book. So I'm sure it's not quite as long, but I've listened to the first chapter and part of the second chapter so far. And uh, 
I think it's going to be a good one. I think it's what we're going to need moving forward. I honestly do. Uh, if you have any questions about the Lord's work or role in everything that's going on, all the circumstances surrounding this pandemic, right, COVID-19, uh, I think this would be a good one to read. You know, he references conspiracy theories and stuff already, uh, even Christian conspiracy theories, um, end times and whatnot in, in, in this already. And I've, I've barely begun it, so I, I can't really say where he's going with some of it. But um, I can share with you what he says his aim is with this book. And then I just encourage you to, like, read, maybe. Just grab a copy. It was, like, I think it was six ninety nine on um, my uh, Apple Books or Books app on my iPad. <clears throat> And so, um, I don't know how much the hard copy would be. Maybe you could Amazon check it or whatever. I think audio was 12 or 13 bucks. He's reading it too, which is cool. He's got a, a cool British uh, English accent. Um, anyway, he writes this. Um, this is the preface. I'll read a little bit and I'll be done. Um, he writes, this little book uh, would not have been written had it not been for the invitation from Time Magazine to write a short piece early on in the COVID-19 pandemic. And then he goes on to thank, <clears throat> he goes on to thank uh, the person helping commission and edit, and he thanks his wife at one point. I don't think that it's here, but he writes, the, the present discussion is, for, is a further attempt to tease out what may wisely and biblically, biblically be said at such a time as this. As the weeks of lockdown have gone on, I, like I suppose most people, have gone through a range of emotions about it all. But it seems to me important to keep our reactions within a biblical limit. And this is what I'm trying to do here. The aim of this book, then, is not to offer solutions to the questions raised by the pandemic, to give any sort of complete analysis of what we might learn from it or what we ought now to do. My main argument is precisely that we need to resist the knee-jerk reactions that come so readily to mind. Before we can answer those questions in anything other than the, broad, the broadest outline, we need a time of lament, of restraint, of precisely not jumping to, quote, solutions. These may come, God willing, but unless we retreat from our instant reactions, we, na we may not be able to hear them, the solutions. If we spend time in the prayer of lament, new light may come rather than simply the repetition of things we might have wanted to say anyway. Um, and like I said, so far, I'm in the first part of chapter two in the audio book. It doesn't look like it's very long. Um, let's see. No, outside of the prefacing and acknowledgments, there's only five chapters. The chapters are, where do we start? Question, where do we start? Chapter two, reading the Old Testament because he believes that we should start there. And I mean, that's pretty cool. We're starting this series on identity in the Old Testament. Um, and then he goes, chapter three is Jesus and the Gospels. Chapter four is reading the New Testament. And then chapter five is where do we go from here? So I don't know. I think it's going to be a good book. I invite you to check it out. I'm going to keep listening and I'll probably end up reading it too because I don't run as often as I'm going to want to, to work through this book. So... I may read and listen as we go, um, but the, the opinion that we have is easy to find support for. Um, what's not easy is making decisions that could have an effect on someone else. Um, the decisions we make here in this building, as much as we could possibly say, you know what, listen, you can make your own decision. 
if you come here, you know, you're assuming full responsibility, um, blah, 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 blah. You know, we could say stuff like that. Um, but any decision that we make here that allows those doors to be open and for people to sit in this building together, um, that's on us. It really is. As much as we want to say it isn't, it is. And so it's important that we uh, make the best decisions moving forward. Our strategy team is going to be meeting again here in the next few weeks to figure out how to m maybe make the next step forward or maybe what those steps forward will look like. Um, I've really struggled personally in understanding how to do that. And so I think um, I'm, you know, as a team, doing that will work better. Um, but all of this, this series on identity, this book that I'm reading, uh, God in the Pandemic, um, the series we just finished did the Psalm Total, uh, our strategy team meeting to talk about how to re uh, regather in a, in, a, in a more full way, right? Or when to do that. Um, it has nothing to do with us. Not specifically, right? It has everything to do with with, with you. It has everything to do with others. I, I study and I'm, I'm preaching these messages because I feel like the Lord has called me to this. He's called me to be a pastor here in this church. And with that comes the uh, responsibility of bringing the word of God. <laughs> but I, my heart's desire is for you to grow in your faith. And for you to grow in your faith so that you can be an example for others who need to grow in their faith to grow also. Today could be the last day that I'm on earth. I hope not, and I don't think it is. I feel for pretty healthy. But I'm not promised tomorrow. And if I'm not promised tomorrow, I have to make the most of what I have today. And uh, I think we're all called to that. The, the most that I can do today is process in my faith. The most that I can do today is surrender to Christ more. The most that I can do today is open myself up to what he would have for my life. The most that I can do today is be the best example of him that I can be, even if that means I am apologizing for my mistakes, even if that means that I am uh, uh, taking on something that feels too heavy for me, you know? And so... Uh, motivation is uh, for Christ to be known by all. But not just to be known, but to be like known. Deep down heart knowledge, right? That then comes out in word and action and, 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 and whatnot. <sighs> okay. I got a... <clears throat> 18 minute video that was supposed to be like 10 minutes so I'm going to stop there I love you guys I hope you're doing well um, continue praying for our family who is mourning the loss of loved ones continue praying for our leaders who have to make decisions amidst all of the stuff that's going on uh, continue to pray for unity <laughs> um, pray for unity right pray for unity in the things that matter and grace in the things that do not um, let's have grace for people. Uh, let's extend grace to people. And um, let's live in such a way that the Lord wins this day. And if it's only winning this day through the way that I respond to my circumstance, uh, that's victory in itself. Um... <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, I feel like I could just ramble on forever. There's so much I feel like I could say. Um, I guess this is the last thing I'll say. Uh, work to surrender everything that you think you are today for everything that you were created to be. I think those were my words at the end of my message on Sunday. Something to that effect. Um, 
surrender yourself in order to have a vision of yourself that, that God has of you and then live in that view. I love you. I will see you again on Friday. I'm pretty sure I won't forget this time uh, because I didn't forget today. Have a good day, guys.